Good morning from Damascus, Syria. It's going to be another wonderful day touring Syria. We're going to be heading north today, heading towards Aleppo, which I'm super excited to see. And we're going to be making a couple of stops along the way. Let's go see what it's like to drive around the northwestern part of Syria. It's going to be mostly a driving day with a couple of stops. We will also begin to see some of the harder parts of Syria, for me at least. The destruction left by the war becomes readily apparent the more north you go. Fortunately, there's also beautiful desert landscapes to enjoy along the way as well. After a couple of hours, you'll arrive at the ancient city of Malula. Here, they have people that still speak Adamek, or the same dialect that Jesus and his disciples spoke, allegedly. Okay. We will have the opportunity to hear this ancient language here. Okay. We enter this extremely old church that is oozing history, if that makes sense. Welcome to St. Sergius, a Greek Orthodox church. It is dedicated to two Roman soldiers named Sarkas and Bacchus. These were Roman soldiers who wanted to follow Jesus and refused to participate in a sacrifice to Zeus in their town, and they were murdered for this. So the local followers built this church in their memory. Something unique I've learned is that there has never been any sacrificial rituals allowed here. No eating of the body or the blood of Christ. For those who don't know, that means no eating the crackers or drinking wine or grape juice that is customary during Mass. This is the Bible in Arabic here. Now we will hear a prayer titled, Jesus Help Us, in Adamic, Jesus' native tongue. I'm Catholic, and for me this was a really special and unique thing to experience. For those who are curious, here's a written visualization of what this language is called. Crouch down. We still had a long drive ahead of us, so we took the opportunity to go for a hike to stretch our legs by walking through this pretty gorge on our way to another unique church, instead of driving there. such a fun hike to come on. There's nobody here. You can hear the echoes of your footsteps in here. It's just you and the birds and the little stream that's trickling here. We've arrived at St. Thicla Church. It was named for another person who wanted to follow Jesus. Her form of protest came in the way of refusing an arranged marriage. Allegedly, while running from her family, a solid rock gave way to a grotto just for her by God, where she spent the rest of her life healing people and spreading her faith. She dug a special spring that still flows to this day, and it is said it will cure ailments and illness if you drink some of this water, which you can still do. This is also one of the few Adamic speaking churches left. We were allowed a very quick glimpse into her alleged living quarters. Time to get back on the road. Another hour and a half got us to Holmes. It is here that the sobering sights really begin. There are bombed out buildings everywhere from the siege of Holmes, as well as subsequent earthquakes that are a constant reminder of recent past. We've seen hints of destruction on the way, but my God, when you look at all of this and it just, it just hits so differently when you're looking at it in person instead of on a TV. I mean, this is such a waste, so stupid, that this is what we do to each other. Look at all of this destruction here. I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's sad, it's hard to see. And these people are just so used to it. They see it every single day and I can't imagine getting to that point. It's on such a large scale that it's everywhere you look around this area. But there's plenty of signs of cleaning up and rebuilding too, and I have faith that someday soon, these buildings will have their time for restoration and repair. We have another unique church on the itinerary. This is St. Mary's Church of the Holy Belt. 
It's one of the very oldest churches in the world, with origins dating back as far as 59 AD. It houses a piece of cloth that allegedly was worn by the Virgin Mary. Sadly, we cannot see it for ourselves, as the man with the key to the room is not working today. But it doesn't take away from the beautiful relic of a church. They even maintain the old underground church where people used to have to hide to pray from the Romans. Imagine having to hike down here for services. This was all the space they had between the halls and these two rooms. It smells so earthy in here. It is well time for lunch, and our driver was a chef in another life. He insisted we go to his favorite shawarma restaurant in town and promises we won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. I have never had a shawarma taste like this before. Onions and peppers are perfect. I love how the bread is so crunchy on the outside, very, very soft on the inside. This is what a shawarma is supposed to taste like. This is so fresh. Take a look at that grilled chicken, cheese, peppers, and the sauce in the bread. That was an amazing meal. That is the best shawarma I've ever had, hands down. All too soon, we are back on the road. After a couple more hours, we arrived in Aleppo. We all were very ready to not be in the car. All right, we just got out to Aleppo this evening. We'll be going for a quick round around the evening souk here in Aleppo before heading off to bed, and we're gonna go get some supper as well. So let's go see Aleppo at night. The evenings here are lively and with tons of people watching opportunity. and plenty of food vendors. For supper, our driver again took us to the best falafel shop in Aleppo, where I was welcomed with some legit Syrian hospitality. They invited me in for a front row seat of seeing how falafels and shawarmas are made. Look at the speed they create these monstrous falafels. Wow. They start with smashing the falafels, pouring yogurt and tahini sauce, plenty of spices, and leather, lettuce, cucumber. Herbs and more lemons. The invited me to come back here and watch them make them. This is incredible. What an operation. This is not right. The manager or owner of Ham Haman Restaurant gave me this for free after inviting me in to record how they make all their foods here. And this just doesn't seem right. I'm so willing to be happy to pay for this but they're giving this to me for free and they got my driver and my guide free meals as well. Falafels are perfectly fried. The lemon and the piles of herbs go so well together. The tahini, this is one of the freshest, most delicious falafels I have ever had. This is a good, good recommendation. There is so much going on here, but here's the cross section. Al Haman. Thank you so much. You must give this local hotspot a try if you're in Aleppo. It was fantastic. Clearly the locals think so too. Wow, that, that falafel was massive. And the funny thing is, is that I told my guy that when we were going out for dinner, I only wanted a child-sized portion because I wasn't that hungry. And oh, I was barely able to finish about half of that. I think I was in a food coma after that as I went to bed very tired and very full. Thanks for joining me on this drive to Aleppo, and I'll see you in the next video.